can be tricky to identify dragonflies and damselflies when you're first starting out, but fear not. We've teamed up with the British Dragonfly Society to give you some handy tips on how to identify some of the most common dragonfly and damselfly species that you're likely to spot in your garden in the summer. We will be covering males and females, but in general, males will be more visible around water where they're protecting their territory, whilst females will return to water to lay their eggs. The most obvious difference between dragonflies and damselflies is that dragonflies are large, strong flyers, whereas damselflies are smaller and more delicate. When they're taking a break, dragonflies rest with their wings spread out to the side, whilst damselflies rest with their wings folded back. Look out for their eyes too. Dragonfly eyes meet at the centre of their heads, whilst damselfly eyes are separated on either side of their head. Let's start with an easy one. Large red damselflies are appropriately named. They're relatively large and red. There is also a small red damselfly, but it's much rarer and only found in heathlands in Southern England and West Wales. Large red damselflies, on the other hand, are common and widespread. So if you spot a red damselfly in your garden, it's likely to be this one. Here's what to look out for. The large red damselfly is up to 36 millimeters long. It has a red abdomen with some black markings, as well as black legs and black wing spots. The females can have some yellow markings on the abdomen too, and some come in a darker form. Also look out for their dreamy looking stripy eyes. If you spot a blue damselfly, there are a couple of species that look very similar. We're going to look at the most common species here, as this is what you're most likely to find flying around your garden pond. Blue damselflies that are on the wing in summer are likely to be an azure, a common blue or a blue-tailed. So how do we tell the difference? The two blues that look really similar at first glance are azures and common blues. Azures are common, widespread and more likely to be loitering around your pond as common blues prefer larger bodies of water. If you get a closer look, you can look out for the following. The azure damselfly is up to 33 millimetres long. It has a black spur on the side of its thorax and thin blue shoulder stripes. The male is blue with black stripes and has a black U-shaped marking behind its wing bases. It also has a black bow tie shaped marking at the end of its abdomen. The females are generally green with extensive black colouring on the abdomen, although there is a blue form to look out for too. The common blue damselfly is up to 32 millimetres long. It has wide shoulder stripes and unlike the azure, it has no spur on the side of its thorax. The male has a tree or mushroom shaped black mark behind its wing bases and two completely blue segments at the end of its abdomen, a bit like tail lights. The female comes in two colour forms, blue or a drab green that turns brown with age. They also have black rocket shaped markings along the top of the abdomen. If you spot a damselfly with just a flash of blue, it could be the blue-tailed damselfly. Here's what to look out for. The blue-tailed damselfly is up to 31 millimetres long. The male blue-tailed damselfly is easy to spot as it has a black abdomen with a flashy blue spot at the end, hence the name blue-tailed. The females come in five different colour forms, which can make it tricky to identify them, but a good feature to look out for on both males and females is their black and white wing spots. Now we're going to look at the most common dragonfly species that you might see hanging around your garden in the summer. The southern hawker, the common hawker, the four spotted chaser, the common darter, and the golden ring dragonfly. Hawkers get their name from their feeding behaviour. They like to hunt for insects on the wing and can often be seen high up and along woodland edges and hedgerows. The southern hawker is a large dragonfly reaching up to 70 millimetres long. They're colourful and inquisitive and if you're lucky you might have one flying around you just to see what you're up to. 
The females are brown with bright green markings and the males are dark coloured with bright green and blue markings. There's also a rare form of the male which only has blue markings. Both the male and the female have broad bright shoulder stripes on the top of the thorax as well as two bands of colour across the bottom of the abdomen. Look out for their dark wing veins and wing spots and an elongated triangular mark on segment 2 near the top of the abdomen. The common hawker is often spotted around moorland and acidic pools and is a large dragonfly that reaches up to 74 millimetres. The males have blue eyes and are black with blue spots on the abdomen and they sport thin, yellow anti-humeral stripes on the thorax. The females have brown-green eyes and are brown with yellow, blue or green spots on the abdomen. Their anti-humeral stripes are either very small or completely absent. Both the male and the female have paired spots on each abdominal segment. They also have a yellow costa or leading wing vein and broad stripes on the side of the thorax. Chasers and darters are significantly smaller than hawkers. These dragonflies like to perch and then suddenly chase after or dart after their prey, hence the name. Their movement can often appear a lot more erratic than the movement of the hawkers. The four-spotted chaser is up to 48 millimetres long. They have a brown chunky abdomen with yellow marks on the sides as well as small dark triangles on their wing bases. Each wing is decorated with two obvious dark spots and they're often described as looking like flying cigars. The males and females very handily look the same. The common darter is the most common species of darter, so if you see a smallish red dragonfly, it's likely to be this one. Like its name suggests, the common darter is common and widespread, and it likes to make the most of the summer, often being seen well into November. It's a fairly small dragonfly, only reaching up to 43mm long. The males are a bright orange-red with yellow panels on the side of the thorax. The females are ochre and become duller in colour or more red with age. Both the male and the female have pale stripes on their legs and their wing spots vary in colour. The ruddy darter is similar in appearance at first glance, however you are unlikely to spot those in your garden. The golden ring dragonfly is found near fast flowing burns where it breeds. And this is also one that you're likely to spot if you're out hill walking. The male reaches up to 74 millimetres long, but the female, with her long ovipositor, can reach a giant 84 millimetres long. This makes her Britain's longest dragonfly. Both the male and female golden ring dragonfly are a striking black colour, with distinctive yellow rings along the length of the abdomen. They have bright green eyes that only meet at the top of the head. You can tell them apart by getting a closer look at the abdomen. The male's abdomen has a slight club shape to it, whereas the female's is more parallel sided with a very long ovipositor. So that pretty much covers all the common dragonfly and damselfly species that you're likely to see on the wing in the summer. But there's one more thing you can keep an eye out for, exuviae. If you have a pond, then have a look for exuviae on vegetation around the pond. An exuvia is the external skeleton of the larva which is left behind after the larva has crawled out of the water and the adult has emerged. Damselfly exuviae are smaller and slimmer than typical dragonfly exuviae. If you'd like to learn more about dragonflies, there is absolutely loads of information on the British Dragonfly Society's website where you can learn about more species and look at lots of beautiful pictures to help with identifying what you've seen. And don't forget to send records of any dragonflies you see to british-dragonflies.org.uk and of course check out the Wildlife Garden Project website where you can learn lots of tips to make your garden more wildlife friendly.